here today with uh, Dermot Smurfett, who is the CEO of GAN, which is an emerging software platform provider to uh, the online gaming industry and now in the US to the emerging online sports betting industry. Uh, and Dermot, I think we have to start by saying congratulations. Uh, you just got a, a really uh, neat new contract. So you might want to tell us about it. Thank you. Yes, we did. And winning a 10 year deal with any major retail casino operator in America is a pretty big deal. Most contracts are typically three, four, five years in duration. We have a 10 year deal in the state of Michigan to bring Win Casino online with both internet casino gaming and online sports betting. I, I would take a little bit of issue with the concept of everything being emerging. GAN's been around for 18 years, publicly traded for seven years, and most recently NASDAQ listed courtesy of, uh, of a highly successful early May NASDAQ uplisting. And uh, very much thank you uh, to you and your team for all your support over these years. It's been quite the journey, but internet gambling is now far from emerging. It's very much uh, all about the future of retail casino gaming here in the great country of the United States. Okay, well, good. Then tell us about that future. You uh, you changed your listing from London to NASDAQ earlier this year. And as you said, it's been very successful. You went off at the upper end of your range and, and the price has since doubled. Um, so tell us about why you made that change to NASDAQ and what your plans are here in the U.S. Well, we had nearly a three-year long-standing equity capital market strategy to bring GAN's equity story and early and continuing market advantage uh, to U.S. retail and institutional investors. And the only real way to do that is by uh, having your equity listed on a major recognized investment exchange like NASDAQ. Uh, being listed in one of the junior markets in London was always an impediment to us, um, kind of hamstrung our valuations in, in a very real way and caused some, uh, I would argue, minor competitive disadvantage relative to other major US corporations uh, selling technology and services to retail casinos to bring them online. So what we wanted to do was to remove that minor competitive disadvantage and uh, become fully uh, available to the retail audience as well as the institutional US investor audience in a way we previously had not been. So very successful IPO, very happy with the results and very happy with the continued growth momentum and equity story that we have available to investors uh, coast to coast. Okay, great. If um, you've got a lot of great growth ambitions and if emerging is not the right word to use for um, online gaming and sports betting in the US, certainly growth is a, an appropriate word. Uh, you, you have projected uh, revenues this year around 37 to 39 million, but you also say that if you can maintain 20% share in an online sports betting, 30% in online gaming, that your potential revenue is in excess of $500 million. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about that growth potential in the U.S. and how you expect to capture that, the, the, that share. Well, very much in the pre-COVID environment, there was a, a large-scale belief amongst the industry analysts, the great and the good, that uh, retail and online sports betting would really be the key drivers of the incremental revenue opportunity for retail casino operators and others to capture. Uh, our, our clients, we now believe, uh, have not just a, a retail and online sports gambling opportunity, but also a significantly enhanced internet casino gaming opportunity. It seems to be a significant momentum politically in favor of legislating and regulating internet casino gaming in all kinds of different states. I, I mean, we have been uh, reading the tea leaves very, very carefully. We've been talking to our clients. We've got clients of simulated gaming that sit in a whole bunch of different states, coast to coast to coast that have yet to regulate real money internet gaming. And there is a, a strong, persistent and repeated belief that everybody with some notable exceptions are in favor of regulating internet casino gaming in a way they haven't been in the past. So the total addressable market skipping out between five and 10 years, let's pick seven years as the pivot point in time, the total addressable market opportunity is a $30 billion revenue opportunity for our clients to capture. And we enable them to capture that just as we have uh, enabled our current clients to capture significant market share over the course of the last two and a half years since internet sports gambling launched online in the state of New Jersey. So retail uh, casino gaming is gonna be massively augmented by 
uh, the continued and arguably rapid regulation of internet casino gaming. I think we'll see some very real surprises. We'll see certain states have said uh, it'll never happen because XYZ casino operators dead set against it. Uh, we'll see those states uh, decide to grasp the political nettle, chop all the political wood required and get internet casino passed. You've seen Indiana, for example, uh, just put in motion the gears of legislation to get online casino gaming added to internet sports betting, uh, regulated and commenced in fall of last year. And the, the true brutal fact is states need more and more incremental taxation revenues because retail gaming is no longer the gift that has been giving uh, quite so generously as it has in the past. So regulated internet casino gaming is going to become a very heavy feature of the political regulatory cycle. It's not just online sports, it's also online casino. Uh, one thing, you have a really a pretty simple story to tell, and you tell it very well in the investor presentation on your website, where you, uh, you, ta at, you talk about uh, your share of your clients' revenues uh, and then the size of the market. Can you just tell, uh, take a minute to describe for us that page that's on your website that talks about that market potential? Yeah, well, as stated, the, the, the market's evolutionary path going forwards appears to be both internet sports and internet casino gaming revenues. Uh, we target to keep 10 cents on the dollar or 10% of our clients' revenues. Uh, we publish on a quarterly basis gross operator revenue, which is the total amount of gross gaming revenue and gross sports wagering revenue generated by our clients leveraging our uh, internet gambling system or our platform for enabling retail casinos to move online. Uh, and we, we target a 10% or 10 cents on the dollar share of that, uh, principally through recurring revenue sharing. The, you, you, as you said, you've got uh, a very impressive market share in North America. And you go up against much bigger companies with much bigger R&D budgets. How do you compete against those bigger companies? And then how do you maintain that edge as time goes on? Well, we've announced some major clients since going public. We've announced the Cordish Group in Pennsylvania for internet gambling. We since launched it. Uh, we've announced Churchill Downs for a very significant rollout of internet gambling, very much a sports-led proposition uh, augmented by our market-leading online casino uh, product portfolio. So, uh, and, and we've also rolled out Penn National for simulated gaming. So we compete because there is a huge scarcity of the technology that's required to operate uh, internet gambling at serious scale here in the United States, but also because there's uh, a shared issue, which is there is so much demand for the scarce technology and so much demand for the even more scarce engineering capabilities, the people who know how to set up and run and operate regulated internet gambling behind the scenes for retail casino operators. So this is an environment where there is true scarcity, uh, there's significant demand, and we've seen price increases feed through into the market most recently in the deal announced with uh, win resorts to deploy them online uh, for a 10-year deal in the state of Michigan. So I think that's how we compete by being the best in a market environment where there is true scarcity. And this is, as touched on earlier, a continuing early market advantage. We spent six years optimizing the platform before sports gambling launched two years ago. Uh, we continue to optimize the, the internet gambling platform and what I call the conversion funnel, which fundamentally allows our retail casino operator clients to spend marketing capital to grow their internet gambling business more efficiently than if they were running the same business on somebody else's technology system. So that, in a nutshell, is how we compete, by offering the best financial return on advertising spend for any of our clients relative to other competing platforms which may be available in the marketplace. Our clients have proven to, to scale exceptionally well. Uh, we have market leaders running on our platform. Uh, we are the biggest online gambling business year to date in uh, 2020. And we look forward to great growth delivery, both this year and going forwards, uh, as we continue to win market share, th share through capturing new client opportunities. And Win Resorts is a, a fabulous marquee brand in Las Vegas and obviously in Massachusetts as well. And we look forward to bringing uh, their significant retail customer database online in the state of Michigan, where of course they have a lot of people who have traveled to either of those fabulous properties uh, to engage in the, the, the wondrous retail gaming experience offered uh, on property. The, uh, there's a, uh, a very impressive story, uh, well told, 
Uh, there's an equity analyst for Credit Suisse, uh, Larry Gandler, who recently said that uh, Aristocrat is one big international gaming technology company that is absent from this space. And one way for Aristocrat, which has been an acquisitive company, to get in there is to buy somebody. And he suggested maybe GAN would be a good target and even put a price in there like $730 million. Um, what are the prospects to somebody that you might decide to choose a, a, a larger partner? Well, Frank, as a publicly traded company, frankly, our shares are for sale every single day of every single week. Um, and I couldn't possibly comment on the merits of Larry's perspective. Um, obviously, Aristocrat is a major and highly respected casino equipment manufacturer that makes physical slot machines and casino management systems for retail casino operators. But I think historically online, they've uh, determined to go direct to the consumer with their own B2C social casino offerings. And I, I'd be very surprised if Aristocrat over time isn't engaged in this space, but how they tactically execute upon that is entirely up to them. And we, we couldn't really offer any significant observations. Um, but for sure, this is where all the growth is for um, casino equipment manufacturers. It really is about online, but simulated gaming where I'm delighted to advise you uh, that we've added simulated sports betting to the product proposition. We've just launched it for Jack Entertainment in Ohio to enable them to uh, launch internet sports or simulated internet sports uh, a fair few months before expected regulation and market commencement of real money internet sports betting. So we are doing the right thing very patiently as we have for years and years and years. And we've expanded greatly the simulated gaming product pro proposition in order to allow our clients, Jack Entertainment in Ohio, to go out there and start grabbing up sports enthusiasts well before the marketing onslaught commences at some point in 2021. So uh, GAN is doing the right thing very patiently. What third party casino equipment manufacturers decide to do is way outside our sphere of interest right now. We have uh, a, an exciting sales pipeline. We have a, an expectation, a rational expectation that many more states will regulate internet gambling and GAN will be at the center of capturing the market opportunity for and with our clients. Okay, well, uh, this has been a really good overview in a very short period of time. Uh, anything else that uh, you would like investors or the industry to know about GAN? I think it's the, the steady accumulation of optimizations in a hyper-patient manner, which really sets GAN out. We have a mature, stable leadership team. We have a mature, stable, long-term shareholder group behind GAN. And we have a very, very exciting opportunity to continue to capture our share of this opportunity by bringing our retail casino operator clients online in various different states over time. So uh, unlike other uh, internet gambling investment opportunities, we're a fast growing profitable uh, opportunity to play this space and the uh, expected phenomenal growth rate uh, of internet gambling, both sports betting and casino gaming over the course of the regulatory cycle. And, and I guess that what you just said reminded me of one other point, uh, and that is uh, you have a pristine balance sheet. Yes, we, uh, we've raised uh, $64 million as part of our IPO uh, on Cinco de Mayo this year, and uh, we're very happy to continue to increase our cash balances. We have no uh, current stated plan to raise any debt against that. Uh, and uh, we look forward to leveraging that capital to rapidly expand our engineering resources, as we are doing right now in Las Vegas. So anybody out there in Las Vegas who is in software engineering, who wants to come and join the future wave of internet gambling technology providers, then please don't be backwards about coming forward. Well, uh, Dermot, thanks very much. It's been a great overview, and I, I think the most impressive thing is that an Irishman knows Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> You can't avoid it if you're living in Southern California. Sure, that's true. Thanks again, Dermot. Lovely to see you, Frank. Be well. You too. Bye-bye.